Hello students. Uh, so today's session is about uh, how to prepare consolidated financial statement. And in today's session, we will be discussing about the uh, preparation of consolidated income statement. There will be series of uh, uh, lectures on uh, consolidated financial statement as it's a huge topic and uh, covers different levels of uh, knowledge in different professional qualification. So this lecture is uh, uh, specifically helpful for all professional accountancy students such as ECCA, SEMA, ICAEW, CA and ICMAP students. So today's agenda is, is to discuss uh, uh, how to prepare consolidated income statement. But before moving to that, I will give you an idea that uh, in what situation we need to prepare consolidated financial statement. So, if a company that is APLC acquires shares of BPLC, then we have to check that how much shares have been acquired. So if APLC acquires at least 51 percentage shares in BPLC, so we will conclude that APLC has acquired control of BPLC. So 51% shares is majority shares in BPLC. And as a result of this majority shares, APLC will able to get control of BPLC. There is a definition in IFRS 10 that what is the control and at what percentage control can be obtained and so and so on. But uh, when we are trying to just identifying that if a company is a subsidiary or not, we have to see that the number of shares. And if there are majority of shares, then we can say that uh, APLC is a uh, is controlling BPLC. But sometimes it also happens that uh, if someone has uh, less than 50% shares, then it's still a company can control another company. Now, if a has acquired more than 51% shares, then we can classify A as acquirer or we can also say it's a parent company or acquirer. And it is the responsibility of the acquirer to prepare financial consolidated financial statement on behalf of all the subsidiaries. So if there are five subsidiaries, say suppose, then APLC has to prepare consolidated financial statement of all the subsidiaries. Now BPLC is classified as a subsidiary company and also it's an acquiry company. Both APLC and BPLC will prepare their financial statement separately, but APLC will prepare consolidated financial statement. So for APLC, there are two sets of accounts. One is the individual accounts and one is the consolidated financial statement. Now, in order to prepare a consolidated income statement, first of all, I'll tell you that uh, what are the steps in making consolidated income statement and then we'll prepare income statement. So first of all, we'll combine all the income and expenses of both parent company and subsidiary company. Simply we have to combine the income statement of both parent company and subsidiary company. But we have to be careful about that in case of mid air acquisition, we have to be careful about that how much we have to take from subsidiary. For example, if just six months past of the acquisition of subsidiary, then we will consider
the income or expenses as 6 by 12. Now, for example, we have to combine revenue of parent and subsidiary. We have to combine COGS of parent and subsidiary. But when we combine revenue of parent and subsidiary, we have to be careful about the treatment of uh, the intra group sale of inventory. And we have to make adjustment about intra group sales of inventory. So what will be that adjustment? For example, we will consider revenue of parent company plus subsidiary company and then we will, we will deduct the intra group sales from the combined revenue. And then from the cost of goods sold, we will take parents cost of goods sold, subsidiary cost of goods sold and deduct the same figure that is intra group sales because for one party it's intra group purchase. So we have to deduct intra group sales from both revenue and cost of goods sold. And also there will be another adjustment and that is related to the unrealized profit in stock. If there is any unrealized profit in stock, we have to eliminate that unrealized profit in stock from the closing stock. And the simple thing is that if you add unrealized profit in, uh, in COGS, that would be eliminated. So the main adjustment is to adjust the revenue figure and the cost of goods sold figure. Also, you have to make adjustment about depreciation on fair value adjustment. If there is any fair value adjustment given in the question, then that fair value adjustment will result in the depreciation. So there are two possible approaches. Either you can adjust depreciation in COGS or you can adjust depreciation in other expense such as administration cost. Either that will be given in the question or you can take an assumption or you can check the nature of the asset that where to charge depreciation. Afterwards, we have to consider that uh, sometime it happens that there will be intra group income such as there will be intra group dividend income or intra group interest income. So if such is the situation that one company is receiving dividend income or interest income from other company, then what you have to do is to eliminate all intra group income. So if parent has recorded intra group income or subsidiary has recorded intra group income or intra group expenses, all are to be eliminated in full. And then we will consider after considering all the income and expenses, we have to check that whether there is an associate or not. Associate is a company in which we have more than 20% shares. But for associate, we do not use consolidated method of accounting. In a state, associate would be dealt with as equity method of accounting. And equity method of accounting says that when there is any associate present in the group, then against that associate, we have to include income from associate, a single figure in the consolidated income statement. So income from associated is, is a single line item that we have to treat it as other income. Similarly, after completing the profit after tax figure, we have to consider, we have to consider the other comprehensive income of both parent and subsidiary. 
and then we have to identify the non controlling interest share in profit and loss account as well as the other comprehensive income so after keeping in mind all these stuff let's prepare a consolidated income statement so assuming we have a income statement available of two entities and that is for 31st december 2020 and we have revenue say suppose there are two companies a and b their individual income statement and we have a revenue of uh, 500000 and similarly we have revenue of 300000 and then we have cost of goods sold of 150 and cost of goods sold of 100 so so you can see that uh, we have uh, individual income statement of a and b and uh, we have after tax profit of both the companies other comprehensive income and total comprehensive income of 190 and 90 and uh, we have some additional information a acquire 80% shares of b on 1st january 2020 that at the start of the year so it's not a mid year acquisition but after acquisition a which is a parent company sold goods to b at a price of 50000 and a usually charge markup of 30% on cost 50% of the goods were in stock of p this is an intra group adjustment and we will will identify that uh, what is the intra group sales and how much is the intra group profit remember that in consolidated financial statement we prepare consolidated financial statement assuming that uh, it's a single entity a group is a single entity and in consolidated financial statement we do not report the intra group sales or intra group profit similarly a also acquired 25% shares of another entity on 1st july 2020 and uh, you can see that the percentage is less than 50% so it's a case of an associate company and profit after tax of the complete year is given as 28000 prepare consolidated statement of comprehensive income of a b group now as we have to combine both a and b and we have to consider the adjustment as well so let's start the consolidated income statement pro forma so this is the consolidated income statement for the year ended 31st december 31st december 2020 so first of all the pro forma that is first one is the revenue figure this is the pro forma this is cogs and then gross profit expenses and then we have income from associate afterward we have finance cost and then profit before tax then we will deduct tax from this and it's consolidated after tax profit and afterward you will put other comprehensive income and in the question we have uh, revaluation surplus and that will give us a figure of total comprehensive income so let's complete this uh, statement up to total comprehensive income first so the revenue of parent company is 500 and revenue of uh, subsidiary company is 300 so what is the process combined revenue of both parent and subsidiary company so let's take 500 revenue of parent company and 300 subsidiary company but there is an intra group sales and that intra group sales is 50000 so we have to eliminate that intra group sales that is 
fifty from the combined revenue. As a result, we have a revenue of seven fifty thousand. Similarly, as far as cost of goods sold is concerned, so it's uh, one fifty and hundred. So it's one fifty plus hundred, and we have to remove this fifty again from the cost of goods sold, and we have to add the unrealized profit from the stock. So we have to calculate unrealized profit. So let me just calculate unrealized profit. Fifty thousand is the selling price. Markup is thirty percent, and fifty percent goods are in stock. So let's identify the unrealized profit working. Provision for unrealized profit or unrealized profit simply. So let's identify the selling price. Selling price was fifty thousand. The markup was. Thirty percent, and the goods were in stock of B. Half that is fifty percent. So first of all, let me just identify the uh, profit figure. That how much profit was charged as a result of the sales. So the profit figure is selling price is fifty thousand. And markup is thirty percent, so that means sales is uh, hundred plus thirty, that is one thirty, and we have to identify profit, that is thirty. So this will give us a figure of uh, fifty thousand divided by one thirty into thirty, and that is eleven five three eight. So this is the complete profit. But as fifty percent of the goods have been sold by a subsidiary. So unrealized profit is the profit that is within the stock, and stock figure is fifty percent. So take fifty percent of that, and uh, that is five seven six nine. So five seven six nine is the unrealized profit, and we have to eliminate that unrealized profit from the books of subsidiary, as the stock is in the books of subsidiary. So. In thousand, we have to work out in thousand. So it's fifty uh, divided by one thirty, multiplied by thirty, and uh, it's uh, five point seven six. So we can make it uh, six six thousand. So we have to make adjustment of six thousand, and as a result, consolidated cost of goods sold will be minus fifty plus six. So it's Two zero six. Now, from the revenue, two zero six is the gross profit, and the gross profit consolidated gross profit is five double four triple zero. Now, combine all the expense of parent and subsidiary, so we have one hundred and eighty, and there is no further adjustment in expenses. So 100 of parent company, 80 of subsidiary company. There is no adjustment. Adjustment might be depreciation. Adjustment might be impairment of goodwill. But uh, this is the basic example. So expenses are there. Now we have to see that whether there is an associate. So the example says that A also acquired 25% shares of C on first year. See the date. It's mid-year acquisition. And the profit for the full year of C was twenty-eight thousand. So we have to calculate the associate figure. So let's work out income from associate. Profit after tax of associate is. Twenty-eight thousand. Date of acquisition is first July, and our share of parent company is twenty-five percent. Now see how I can calculate the income from associate. 
so take profit that is 28000 time a portion 6 by 12 because it's mid year acquisition and then multiply by the share of parent company so this will be income from associate so you can see that profit after tax of associate using time apportionment if needed multiply by the parents company share so through this formula you can identify always income from associate and there will be no consolidation as income from associate is not to be uh, income of associate is not to be consolidated. So it's 28,000 into 6 divided by 12 multiply by the percentage of parent company. So that is 3,500. So it's uh, Three point five. So take three point five as an income from associate. Add here, that is three point five. Now, as far as finance cost is concerned, combine thirty plus ten all the finance cost, parent plus subsidiary, and that is thirty plus ten. You can refer it here. Working number two for that. You can refer it here. Working number one. And this is 40. So we can identify the profit before tax consolidated 544 minus 180 expense minus 40 finance cost plus 3.5. So the profit before tax is 327.5. Now take the tax figure that is 50 plus 30. So tax is 50 plus 30 so overall the tax is 80 so deduct deduct 80 from it 327.5 minus 80 so that is uh, 247.5 now other comprehensive income the parent company has revaluation of 20 and subsidiary has revaluation of 10 so it's 20 plus 10 so total revaluation surplus is 30 and then we have uh, 277.5 this is the consolidated comprehensive income of parent plus subsidiary and including a share of associate so we we have made one adjustment regarding intra group sales one adjustment regarding unrealized profit and then we have calculated income from associate. Now, this is the consolidated comprehensive income, but uh, we have to identify the share of share of NCI. So, uh, first of all, profit attributable to parent company and NCI. So the profit that is available, consolidated profit is 247.5. So we have to split this 247.5 between the parent company and NCI. So I'll identify the share of NCI and the balance would be transferred to parent company. Now let's find out how we can calculate NCI non-controlling interest share in profit and loss account so for that take profit after tax of subsidiary multiply by the percentage of nci and then check that whether there is any adjustment needed or not so in the above example the profit after tax of uh, subsidiary was I'm taking profit after tax, not the total comprehensive income. Profit after tax was 80. So profit after tax was 80. Time apportionment is needed in case of mid-year acquisition. So percentage of NCI, parent has 80% shares. So NCI has 20% shares. 20% shares is 16. So this is the basic calculation that takes subsidiaries after tax profit 
multiply by the percentage of NCI and then make some adjustment. For example, the adjustment needed is the unrealized profit share of NCI This is only possible when seller is subsidiary. So in the above example, as seller is a parent company, so no adjustment is needed against that. Similarly, we have to make adjustment against impairment of goodwill. And such adjustment is also required in case of the full goodwill method. If we are using full goodwill method then such adjustment is needed and if there is any depreciation on fair value adjustment we have to use that as well in calculation of the NCI share of profit so we have to consider all these adjustments. but in our example there is no adjustment so the profit share of NCI is equal to 16. So I'll write it down here that NCI share in profit is 16 out of total consolidated profit of 247.5. So 247.5 deduct NCI share and the balancing figure is belongs to the parent company that is 231.5. So this is the uh, attribution of profit between parent and NCI. Now same process goes with total comprehensive income that is TCI. So total comprehensive income attributable to parent and subsidiary. parent in NCI so the we will continue working number three and identify how much is the share so the total comprehensive income from the question is 277.5 so we have to attribute 277.5 277.5 between parent company and NCI now check that whether there is any other comprehensive income item that is available with the parent company in the question. So you can see that there is a revaluation surplus and in subsidiaries books, there is a revaluation surplus of 10,000 in which NCI share is there 10,000. So in this figure add NCI share of revaluation surplus of subsidiary which is 10,000 so you can see that 10 multiply by 20 percent that is 2 so total share of NCI in total comprehensive income becomes 18 and now put 18 here so if 18 is the share of uh, NCI in total comprehensive income of 277.5 then the balancing figure is 259.5 belongs to parent company. So this is the, this is the solution of this basic example in which we have combined all the income and expenses of parent and subsidiary. We have eliminated intra-group sales. We have adjust unrealized profit in stock. And then we, we, we have identified the NCI share of profit and NCI share of total comprehensive income. Now the next example, and we have a question of income statement for the year ended December 2020. And we have three companies, A, B, and C, and their respective uh, income statement is given. So we have revenue, cost of goods sold, gross profit, expenses. There is an investment income. So we have to check that whether that investment income is from the group companies or not. And there is finance cost, profit before tax, taxation and profit after tax. Additional information says that A, which is a parent company, acquired 70% shares of B. So 
if A has 70% shares of B, then NCI has 30% shares of B on 1st March 2020. So you can see that the accounting year is January to December. So it's a case of mid-year acquisition. So we have to consider March till December. That is the 10 month out of 12. And A also acquired 30% shares of C. So C becomes an associate company. And that is, was a full year acquisition because it was already acquired. After acquisition of subsidiary, subsidiary sold goods to A. Now there is a transaction between parent and subsidiary. But in this situation, the seller is a subsidiary. And the selling price is 18,000. Margin charged by subsidiary is 30%. And all the goods are in stock of A. So we have to identify unrealized profit and we have to eliminate that unrealized profit. Subsidiary has announced or declare a dividend of 10,000. Obviously, we have to identify the share of parent company and we have to eliminate intra group invest in investment income that is received from the subsidiary. A has calculated goodwill against the acquisition and full goodwill method is used as at December goodwill of B was subject to an impairment of 5000. So we have to identify the share of impairment for parent company as well as NCI. Prepare consolidated income statement for the year ended December 2020. So let's prepare. The process will remain the same. That is consolidated income statement. For the year ended 31st December 2020. But remember that in this situation, we have to be careful about the mid-year acquisition. So first of all, let's consider revenue of parent and subsidiary. So parent revenue is 500,000, subsidiary is 200,000. Now see, 500,000 is in total, but subsidiary is 200,000 and we have to take 10 by 12 because this is the case of mid-year acquisition and then we have to adjust intra-group sales which is 18,000 so eliminate intra-group sales now identify how much is the consolidated revenue so consolidated revenue is 200,000 into 10 plus 500,000 minus 18,000. So this is a figure that is 648667. This is the consolidated revenue. Now similarly, we have COGS. So COGS of the parent company is 180 plus 80,000. So 180,000 of parent, 80,000 of subsidiary, and due to mid-year acquisition, take 10 by 12, eliminate intra-group sales, and then add unrealized profit in stock. So what is unrealized profit? 30% is the margin. So we have uh, unrealized profit in stock, and that is, um, let me just calculate it here. So it's 18,000 multiplied by 30%. So it's uh, 5,400. So 5,400 is the unrealized profit. Now let's identify how much is the share. So we have one like 80,000 minus 18,000 plus 5,400. So the figure is 234. Two 234067. So as a result, we have gross profit, consolidated gross profit is 648667 minus 234067. So we have 414600 is the consolidated gross profit. Now we have to deduct expenses also considering the adjustment. 
So parents expenses are 35,000 plus 20,000. So 35,000 plus 20,000, but it's 10 by 12. And then we have to adjust the impairment loss and that impairment loss is 5,000. So we have to take the full impairment loss here. That is 5,000. So the combined consolidated expenses are now It's 56,667. Now after that, we have to consider the investment income. That is the dividend income. So in the parents books, the investment income is written as 10,000. So from where this 10,000 has been received. So subsidiary has given 10,000 dividend, but parent share of dividend is only 70%. So it means that 7,000 of the dividend income is being received from the subsidiary company. So it's intra group and we have to eliminate 7,000 out of 10,000 and the remaining 3,000 dividend income is being received outside the group. So we have to show the amount of dividend income that is received outside the group. Similarly, as there is an associate company, so we have to calculate income or profit from associate for which take profit after tax of associate, check whether it's fully requisition or it's mid year requisition as in the example, it's fully requisition. So 48,000 is the profit after tax and we have 30% share in associate. So it's 48,000 into 30 percent. So this is our share in associate 48,000 into 30 percent that is 14,400. Similarly, there is a finance cost and accordingly finance cost is also being time apportioned 8,000 and 6,000, 8,000 full and 6000 into 10 by 12. So every item is to be considered as 10 by 12 due to mid year acquisition. So it's 5000. And now calculate the consolidated profit before tax figure. So it's 414600 minus 56667 plus 3000 plus 14,400 and minus 5000. So this will give us a figure of uh, 370333. Now deduct taxation from this figure. Consider profit uh, tax of parent and subsidiary 54 and 38,000. So it's 54,000 plus 38,000 into 10 by 12. So it's 38,000 into 10 divided by 12 plus 54,000. So that becomes 85,667. So this is profit for the year or profit after tax consolidated. Two eighty four six six six. Now this profit is to be attributed as so it's profit attributable to parent company and NCI. So 284666 and we have to identify NCI so let's work out NCI so take profit after tax of subsidiary 
so profit after tax of subsidiary was 56000 but remember it's a case of uh, mid year acquisition so you have to take 10 by 12 so 56000 divided by 12 multiplied by 10 so it's 46667 now parent share nci share percentage of nci multiply this figure with percentage of nci and that is 30 percent so it's 14000 now in profit of subsidiary nci share is 14000 but we have to make some adjustment and the first adjustment is related with unrealized profit as the seller was parent company so the unrealized profit was uh, 5400 and nci share of that is 30 percent so it's 5400 multiplied by 30 percent 1620 deduct from the nci share similarly there is an impairment of goodwill and it was full goodwill method impairment was 5000 share of nci was 30 percent so that means 1500 so now we have the share of nci that is 14000 minus 1620 and minus 1500 so it's 10880 so put this here 10880 and you will get the balancing figure 284666 minus 10880 so that is 273786 belongs to parent company this is the balancing figure so in this in this example we have uh, covered the uh, intra group sales as well as uh, uh, the impairment loss the intra group dividend and associate too so if you work along these it systematically you can easily prepare the consolidated income statement but do not forget about the mid-year acquisition case as in the second example you can see that each item whether it's revenue cogs expenses tax each item is to be time apportioned using the uh, appropriate time frame and the critical thing is that you should know how to adjust the uh, adjustment in the non-controlling interest calculation now stay tuned for the next lecture on the consolidation series in the next lecture we will cover some past paper question of uh, consolidated income statement considering the difficult adjustment and then we will move to the consolidated balance sheet